just arrived in South Korea and I'm so After your really comfortable flight, you will arrive in one of the most advanced airports in the world. Even if you arrive late in the evening, you can grab something to eat. Like me here, for example, eating a sandwich with eggs, or more so, a lot of eggs and a little bit of sandwich. I have a bit of bread in between my After you soaked in that you are in South Korea and you may jump around a little bit, your next task is to get to the city center or to your hotel. Now there are a couple of options here. You can take a bus or a taxi, which are the cheapest and the most expensive option. But also you can take the train, which is probably the more convenient option and is used quite frequently by tourists as well as locals. All you have to do is change your money into local currency cash, because the ticket can only be bought with cash. I have some cash living. I have a lot of money. The bills here are really big. We are taking the airport express train from the airport to the city now. It will take us around one hour and the train itself is very big and spacious. It's a seat for pregnant women and it has a toy on it. For us, it was time to call it a night so that we are ready for our first day in the city. We are in South Korea today, so our first day. A traditional breakfast in South Korea looks very different from a Western one, but nevertheless, if you crave those white carbs, you can find some bakery serving some sandwiches as well as sweet bakes. This is bread, biscuit with walnut, I don't know, cream cheese, a lot of things inside. Really good, love it. Full and caffeinated, we are ready to kick off this day. But first things first, we need to figure out how to get a ticket for the train that we're gonna be using every day while in Korea. We're buying a ticket now for this day. It costs 3,000 won. There we go. Look at that, getting a little card in the box. So cool. If you are planning to explore the city by train, which I can highly recommend, I would suggest you to get the card that you can top up and use as you go. The trains and the train stations itself are huge and really feel futuristic, so I would really recommend you to just go there and explore it, even if it's just once. As you navigate your way through the city, be aware that Google Maps is not working as you would be expecting it to work from other places. That means that you can see on the map where you are and what is around you, but you cannot navigate from A to B as you might be used to. However, there are other local apps on the market, such as the Neighbor app, which you can download and use, and which will give you the same effect in terms of navigation. The stations are huge and everywhere you will find signs and navigation in English. But if you do get lost at any point, people are super nice and I'm sure somebody will be there to help you. Today we are visiting the Gyeongbokgung Palace and over here you can buy a ticket for a small fee to enter the actual palace. They also have some free guided tours. Uh, we chose the one in English but I think there are also other languages. Our lovely guide was very knowledgeable and we learned a lot in the short amount of time we had with her walking through the palace. There are some people that hire private guides, but we took the group tour and that was perfectly fine for us. In fact, we learned more because other people ask questions and it is more interesting that way. Only from April to October. 
facts. And one interesting fact that I learned about today is that the Korean alphabet was invented right here by the king. The letter is on the roof. So upper side, upper side, it looks like number two. Number two, it makes I sound. Okay. One amazing thing to do here is to watch the change of guard ceremony. It's a very, very unique ceremony that I've never seen like that before and definitely worth to see. a traditional outfit on the streets next to the palace and then walk the palace and take your pictures of that outfit that's both for women and men. The palace was built in 1395 and as you walk through the grounds of it and the surroundings you will feel that historical beauty all around it and you might want to stay longer than you initially expected. Next to the palace you have a folklore museum, um, it has a couple of floors and a couple of sections, it's quite interesting to walk around here. The admission is free at the moment um, and so it's a great addition to the palace tour. At the end of the royal palace there is a walk through memory lane and it recreates a village of Korea and how Korea used to look like. So you walk across the street, you see many different houses representing many different things. For example over here we see an old coffee house. And then if you walk down the street you can see different things such as here there's a kitchen and you can look into it. And over here what do we have like a little shop of uh, magazines, cartoons, look at that. You just literally feel like you can walk down the street, visit your barber, visit your shop, get your eggs, get your groceries. After all the morning walking, we were getting hungry. And lucky for us, there was a street vendor just in front of the exit of the museum selling a traditional snack. We got this little snack, it's eggs and cheese on bread. What can be better than that? Try. The bread is super soft and moist. It's a bit sweet, and you can feel the egg and the cheese. It's really nice. We are having lunch in a Korean restaurant. We got a lot of side dishes over here with some rice, and the main is gonna be fried pork, and then the cutlery is over here. Oh, yummy! Look at that kimchi. Okay. Found a new favorite place right here next to the amazing cooler. Oh, so nice and so hot outside. We are waiting for our coffee. We have come to walk the Bukchon Hanok village, which is a street with traditional houses, which you can walk along, take pictures. There are actually many people renting traditional dresses and coming right there for the perfect picture spots. For all, the area is super cute and in such a contrast to other parts in Seoul. You have so many coffee shops, literally every meter. It literally feels like little shortage. village 300 years ago look at the buildings look at the architecture it's amazing once 
super cool thing that I didn't know and that I just saw when walking here is that you have a lot of guest houses here so if you want to stay in a traditional accommodation this is probably the place I have no idea what are the prices and how it looks like inside but I mean who wouldn't want to stay here and on top of that there are many really cute souvenir shops over here with really really cute stuff some of it produced right here So we got this mango shaped ice cream, we're gonna give it a try now, it's like really new consistency, very mango not artificial at all, tastes like really fresh sweet mango. After having explored the Bukchon Hanok village, we walked the streets of the city down to see a beautiful temple. This is the Jogiesa temple, which you can enter as well, and it is surrounded by hundreds of these beautiful laterns all around it. Look at that display! This area behind me is in Sadong, and it is mostly famous for being a place of tradition, culture, and a mix of modern and new. And over here you have lots of souvenir shops, coffee shops and restaurants. It is really alive and it will just get busier and busier. And it is definitely a must-do place to come and walk around here. I'm making 60,000 strings. Timer is Korean King Seating Region. Mega da, bo, 8, 8, 16, 16, 32, Adishan. Thank you, 7,000 won. Being made, and we chose the almond flavor. <laughs> no, it's a video. It's a video. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try. It's very nice. It's honey that is created to, into strings. And they have like nuts inside. Very sweet. Very nice. Super cool. Never ate of it. This mall is such a cool place. You have four floors of unique shops that focus on some creative art that either you can do in a DIY workshop or the seller would do for you. So for example over here you have scratch cards that you can um, be playing around with. Over there you can create your dog from a material and you can create necklaces, bags of uh, stitches that you like, anything really. It's such a mix of creative places and I feel like if this was in London it would be booked out 24 hours. After a full day of exploring and walking around the city, you'll want to have a nice dinner. In Sadong is a perfect place to have that, as there are a variety of options and many local places you can eat at. And also, it lights up in the evening, so you will see the beauty of Seoul at night on your very first day. There's so much more that you can see and do in the city and I hope you stay tuned for the second video on that series on South Korea Seoul.